During this webinar, you will be hearing from Dr. Sarah Hazel, SCNM Professor and Hydrotherapy Care Coordinator. So once again, thank you for attending our webinar. We hope you find this presentation both interesting and informative. And with that, let me introduce our speaker. Dr. Sarah Hazel is a professor at SCNM and has more than 14 years of experience utilizing botanical medicine, nutritional science, detoxification strategies, oriental medicine, hydrotherapy, and massage therapy to treat chronic and acute conditions. She received her bachelor's degree in biology from Eastern Connecticut State University and then went on to earn her doctorate degree in naturopathic medicine at the National College of Natural Medicine in Portland, Oregon in 1998. Dr. Hazel received additional training in acupuncture and oriental medicine from the Oregon College of Oriental Medicine. Thank you again, and now I'll turn it over to Dr. Hazel for her presentation. Okay, so I am here to talk about hydrotherapy and the different ways that we use hydrotherapy in naturopathic medicine. Hydrotherapy has been referred to in many different ways in naturopathic medicine. Hydrotherapy is specifically indicating the treatment of disease, both physical, mental, and other forms of disease with water, liquid, or fluid. But hydrotherapy in many ways is a thermal therapy. We are using hydrotherapy quite often as a way to deliver temperature to change the temperature of the surface of the body, of the location of the body, or of the body systemically entirely. So hydrotherapy is a combination of using liquid internally and externally as well as using temperature therapy in order to change the temperature of the tissue. Hydrotherapy is a traditional therapy that has been used not just by naturopaths, but long before naturopaths, hydrotherapy has been used in many societies for approximately 8,000, maybe as much as 9,000 years. Hydrotherapy was used in Ayurvedic medicine 8,000 years ago. It was used in Egyptian and Greek and Roman medicine. It's been used in a number of different Asian traditions, Chinese, Japanese, and others. Native Americans use it, and many other cultures use hydrotherapy. In our Western tradition of hydrotherapy, some examples have included the hydrotherapy done in bathhouses and spas, hot springs, sweat lodges, and quite a lot of home hydrotherapy, such as steam inhalation, hot and cold compresses. Hippocrates documented the use of hydrotherapy in the treatment of illness in fat about the 5th century BC. And medical doctors continue to use hydrotherapy, including in hospitals, especially in England and Germany. There are quite a few hospitals that medical doctors both researched and applied quite a lot of different forms of hydrotherapy, particularly in the 1800s and the early 1900s. There were a number of hospitals that really specialized in hydrotherapy treatment throughout Europe and then here in the States, particularly in New York. And hydrotherapy was handed down to the naturopathic profession as a combination of different practitioners, both the alternative practitioners who used hydrotherapy as well as the medical hospitalists that were using hydrotherapy. There has been a number of different research studies in different kinds of aspects of hydrotherapy. And again, there are many forms of hydrotherapy. The physiotherapy profession uh, has done a number of research articles. There is one uh, collective research article that looked at a number of different medical research uh, clinical studies that had been done over the years. And as a group study, they came to the conclusion uh, in physiotherapy volume 88, issue 9, that there were a number of very clear, very definitive, demonstrable benefits from hydrotherapy. These included, well not limited to, but included decreased pain, increased function, increased joint mobility, increased strength, and increased balance. 
it was noted as well that hydrotherapy is particularly effective among older adults, or a geriatric population, and particularly effective amongst those with rheumatic conditions and those with chronic low back pain. And these were instances where they were studying it from the physical medicine perspective with a focus on musculoskeletal pain and disability. Hydrotherapy has also been shown to improve the immune response. A number of different studies have, have done this. One interesting one was a study done in Berlin, Berlin, in the Free University of Berlin in Germany. Uh, this was done, I believe, in the early, 1900, uh, early 1990s. And they studied sequential hydrotherapy applications, which improved the immune response of cancer patients. And they, they used a number of different cold applications done in the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. And they tracked a number of different things, including a sense of well-being, of energy, fatigue, uh, sleep patterns, and other qualities. And in addition to that, they also track the response of the white blood cells, quite a number of different white blood cell markers. And what they found, even after just six weeks, is they found an improvement in the mind-body issues uh, in terms of a uh, sense of wellness, a sense of uh, optimism, and, and other qualities improved. But the other thing that was notable was that the white blood cell counts, the immune system, was increased, was improved. And so that was one, just one of the studies that said that though we often can show symptomatic improvement and improvement of life quality, reduction of pain and improvement of strength, we also are showing systemic effects that are certainly pointing at the possibility of improving the general immune response, and even in chronic disease, and certainly where it is most important. The types of hydrotherapy are many, and for this purpose, we'll just touch on some of them. Some of the hydrotherapy styles and applications that naturopaths use are familiar to physiotherapists, familiar to medical doctors, massage therapists, chiropractors, and some of what we do is a little bit more unique to our paradigm and our needs to create a systemic whole body improvement in the capacity to respond to disease, to fight infection, and to heal chronic illness. Some of the things that we use hydrotherapy for uh, are simple things like cold therapy. Cold therapy that you might be familiar with includes such things as the application of ice over inflamed joints, injured joints, sprained ankles, uh, ice applications to the head during migraines, or other problems that are due to pain and inflammation. Cold therapy reduces inflammation as well as it can have an analgesic effect. But there are other ways that we use cold therapy that's a little bit more unique and advanced. Short cold applications, a cold, I mean somewhere approximately 55 degrees Fahrenheit as an example, short cold applications under a minute cause vasoconstriction of the vessels uh, in the dermis and sometimes reflexive vasoconstriction of the arterioles internally and reflexively in the viscera. These short applications start with this constriction of the circulation, and then when we remove the cold therapy, the body has a rebound dilation. The vessels open up, blood flow increases, and with the increase of blood flow to the area, we have an increase of oxygen and an increase of delivery of nutrients, of immune cells, and a flushing of the area, removing potentially irritants, inflammatory factors, metabolic waste, and in some cases, drug residues or environmental toxins. We use these short cold applications, alternating often with the hot applications, wherein we get vasodilation, relaxation of muscle, maybe relaxation of the bronchial tree, relaxation of the nervous system, putting people in a relaxed, a parasympathetic state. And we alternate. Uh, we call this contrast hydrotherapy, where we alternate cold and hot therapies in order primarily to increase circulation at the same time we might be relaxing the muscles, relaxing the nervous system. This increase in circulation, whether locally to heal an injury uh, in a knee 
or an ankle or a shoulder, but we use it also systemically. We use it to increase circulation throughout the body, and particularly we use it to increase circulation to the major visceral organs, the major organs of the body that are responsible for the maintenance and the healing of our bodies. It sounds like a simple thing, but by enhancing and optimizing the delivery of all necessary elements to these tissues, to these organs, we optimize function. So we're increasing the ability of these organs to optimally function, whether that be your lungs and the capacity to breathe and exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide or the liver. The liver especially and the kidneys are highly vascular organs and their work involves the filtration and the production of certain blood elements and the increase of fresh oxygenated nutrient filled blood and the removal of metabolic waste and other potentially harming substances that can downregulate tissue function enables us to enhance the ability of the body to heal, and in some cases in preventive medicine to maintain health. A heating compress is a version of this concept that is a kind of therapy that naturopaths will use, particularly in office. Many of these therapies are adaptable to home treatment, and we do prescribe them and teach people how to use them at home. But the heating compress is a kind of treatment that we often do in office. One of the forms of heating compress is something we call constitutional hydrotherapy. And this is where we prepare the body for its response to cold by heating the torso with hot towels for about five minutes. And once the body is relaxed, the blood is all on the surface of the skin, the muscles are relaxed, the nervous system is relaxed, and the body is ready to respond to a quick cold therapy where we get from vasodilation to vasoconstriction quite rapidly and we get a flushing of the blood through the visceral organs. And then the body warms up the area again, moves it again from wet hot, then cold, and now heats it up again. And it, this calls forth the body's uh, response to bring the blood back to the surface of the skin. And really we create a pumping action. All while people are lying relaxed, uh, parasympathetic state, muscles relax, mind relax, and enhanced circulation throughout the body. We often combine this with a spine wave, this is a low boat spin to different muscle areas of the body, a massage-like current to pump the limbs, uh, to tonify the skeletal muscles, to reduce pain, uh, and sometimes to uh, treat the lung areas or the liver area or the colon area specifically, different locations. We end the therapy, again, with the hot and cold to the back, again, going for maximum capacity of the body to receive oxygen and nutrients to the tissues and to remove waste and eliminate waste in the body, both through the GI tract, through the processing of the liver and all the cleansing work it does in the blood, as well as increasing blood flow through the kidneys and the elimination that occurs there. There are other forms of heating compresses we do where we're asking the body to, uh, with a sport of hot and preparation, to respond to the cold, to increase circulation, to increase the ability to respond to stress. We can wrap people up in wet sheets. We call them cold wet sheets. And we not only do water applications, we have the body heat up the sheets by our wrapped in wool blankets, warm blankets, keeping the feet warm and uh, asking the body to heat the sheet to the point perhaps of sweating, of creating a detox sweat in order to enhance the elimination through the skin. But we will add things to the wet sheet wrap, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Wet sock treatment is a treatment that is a classic hydrotherapy home remedy. And again, this takes the concept of the body's ability to uh, enhanced circulation throughout the system, but with this acknowledgement that we have a reflexive, this is a closed system, and we have a reflexive capacity to increase circulation just by treating one area of the body. In the wet sock treatment, we heat the feet in a hot foot bath, and then we apply thin 
cold, wet cotton socks, and we cover them with wool, and we have people go lie down in bed, get really warm, and we allow the body to vasodilate again, to respond to the cold with this reflex action, which increases circulation all the way down the leg into the feet, and it has a tendency to draw congestion out of the head because, again, the circulation of our body is a closed system. And we use this to treat head colds, to treat congestion in the sinuses at the onset of colds or the onset of flu, to uh, treat the headaches that often come along with flu, and to inspire the immune system to kick it up a few notches in preparation for fighting an infection. It's also been used for just congested headaches, uh, allergic headaches due to congestion in the sinuses. And that's a home therapy. Another form of hydrotherapy that we use, and we use that here in the clinic, are colonics. And colonics are one of the hydrotherapy styles that would fit into the category of simply washing away things that are burdening the body. Colonics is when we use a uh, system of washing out the colon with water, uh, gently and carefully, body temperature water, when we have colons that are congested, constipation backed up, uh, a problem that can occur is often frequently after antibiotic use or certain other medications, we can have a uh, dysbiosis, a problem with the good bugs having been killed off by medications or antibiotics, and that allows an overgrowth of uh, bugs bacteria in the colon and the intestines that are not as friendly to us as our original flora was. The good flora in our body produces a number of things, vitamin B12, vitamin K, and actually lines and protects us from further infection, from inflammation, and from irritation. And so when we have dysbiosis, when we have constipation, we have a number of problems that occasionally it does behoove us to clean out and then uh, reset with good bugs, with probiotics, with good diet, with good fiber, with water, and an improved diet. Neti pots also are on the same. In neti pots, we are fleshing out the sinus passages. This is particularly useful for people suffering from allergies. Uh, sinus allergies, the hyper response to pollen and other particulate in the air that we're breathing in. We breathe in these particles into our sinus passageways, and that starts up an inflammation process of mucus and congestion and pain. And by simply washing out the sinus passages uh, from this particular, from the pollen, from the dust, uh, from the dander, this can dramatically uh, reduce the inflammatory response and allow the body to downregulate and allows us to use less medication. Uh, and rely on uh, less uh, intervention in other means. In other words, it's a direct uh, assistance to the problem. There are additional things that we do uh, with hydrotherapy. These are just some of them. But we can sometimes combine the use of water, the use of heat, and the use of cold with different substances to get specific effects. And we often include those sorts of treatments into the term hydrotherapy. For many years, for, for many decades in the naturopathic profession, we have used mud as a treatment for pain relief, for inflammation of joints, and for muscles, different kinds of muds, dead sea muds, other muds. And the muds are used either as, in a bath or applied as part of the wet sheet combination. And again, often applied for uh, pain and inflammation of joints and muscles, of rheumatoid arthritis, of injuries, occasion for osteoarthritis, for pain relief. Seaweed applications uh, are used for irritated skin and for detoxing purpose. Different seaweeds are used, and they're often combined with oils, coconut oil and sesame oil in order to hydrate the skin and to produ produce a uh, more healthy, more resilient skin. Clays have been used to draw things to the surface. Uh, clay applications have a very strong drawing power and have been used uh, in simple instances such as drawing abscesses uh, to a head 
when it makes it easier to uh, express and relieve the infection of an abscess. And clays have been used because of their highly negatively electrically charged molecules to help draw out and mobilize positively charged uh, toxins, environmental um, environmental toxins that might be either on the surface of the skin or in the lymphatics. We will sometimes combine hydrotherapies of different kinds with steam room applications and salt scrubs or Epsom salt packs in order to assist the body to relax more, dilate more, sweat more with scrubs to create a friction and remove dead skin things like that with the Epsom salts and the sea salt scrubs. Essential oils, in addition, have been used. They are used both topically in massage oils to relieve different kinds of pain or inflamed conditions, as well as doing things like steam inhalations. We do steam inhalations both uh, in, over bowls, you can do them over sinks at home, but we do them in our steam room as well. The properties of essential oils are many, and we use them like eucalyptus to dilate the bronchioles. We'll use lavender for its anti-inflammatory processes, and we will use things like thyme or cinnamon or clove, rosemary. All of these essential oils have various antimicrobial properties. Some are more antiviral, others antibacterial, some are antifungal, and we will combine these properties with our steam inhalations, with our topical applications, and with some of our salt scrubs as well. Our botanical therapies with hydrotherapy are used in a number of different ways. Sometimes we have people drink uh, detox teas, and by detox teas we mean that we have teas with botanicals that enhance the function of the liver, the kidneys, the GI tract. Some are soothing to the lungs, some ease cough, some stimulate bile flow, and we'll incorporate tea drinking before, during, or after some of the applications that we do as well as we can do teas and massage oil botanicals as part of the pre-treatment and post-treatment of some of the hydrotherapy when we want to have a specific effect, soothing the skin, anti-inflammatory, dilating the lungs, or uh, calming the nerve system. And again, we also use it when we are treating infections. For instance, we will combine mullein and golden seal when applying heating compresses to infected skin because the properties of mullein are soothing and golden seal is antimicrobial. So these are some of the ways that we'll combine our knowledge of these different substances, our botanical medicine, and the application of hot cold and water in what we do not only in the clinic but in some of the therapies that we teach our patients to do so they can use them at home. A good example of a home therapy that is taught is uh, an application of hot and cold to the chest with a warming chest rub containing both botanicals and essential oils. So when the kids or you are suffering or beginning to suffer a lower respiratory condition, condition uh, with a, a dry cough, an irritated cough, a spasmodic uh, coughing, this sort of problem, the application of hot compresses and uh, a short cold with this warming chest rub and then to repeat both front and back, Sometimes combining with steam inhalation is a great winter therapy to have some training in and have on hand and really tends to ease the pain and speed the healing of a lot of our respiratory infections. So in the SAM Medical Center, we have created quite uh, an extensive hydrotherapy suite so that not only we can train our patients in some of the therapies we want them to do at home, but that we can apply some of the more advanced therapies for both acute and chronic illness. And these therapies include one of the mainstays of naturopathic medical hydrotherapy, which is the constitutional hydrotherapy, where we treat uh, acute diseases with constitutional hydrotherapy, for instance, just the cold or the flu, 
uh, this sort of uh, momentary uh, need to increase the circulation, need to support the immune system. But the computational hydrotherapy was so named by O.G. Carroll, who created it in the early 1900s, because his idea was that regular treatment of hot and cold therapies with sine wave current and massage combined with improvements in diet uh, and rest and sleep and sometimes uh, botanical medicine, this comprehensive approach allows the body to improve its overall capacity to heal, to improve its overall wellness, both to resist disease and to recover disease. So it's an old-fashioned term, the constitutional, because he meant it to improve the constitution of his patients. And he would prescribe that, and we would continue to prescribe it, seeing its clinical efficacy, anywhere from one to two times a week for a few weeks, and sometimes for more significant disease processes, as often as three to five times a week for a course of weeks in order to enhance and to speed the healing of the more chronic diseases. We do hot compresses, of course, at the clinic, and hot compresses are hydroculator packs and hot towels with and without Epsom salts in different locations to relax the muscles. Sometimes we do these in preparation for massage treatment, acupuncture, the manipulation of bones uh, in different sorts of manual therapies. One of uh, the special features of our hydrotherapy suite includes the use of two dry infrared saunas. And our saunas are used in many different ways. The point of both the infrared sauna as well as our steam sauna and our steam room is generally to increase the overall temperature of the body by creating mild forms of hyperthermia or increased body temperature, we accomplish a number of different things. This increased body temperature increases systemic circulation, increases sweat and the ability to discharge uh, toxic waste and metabolic waste through the skin, but it also relaxes the muscles. It serves as a de-stressing treatment. It allows the body to relax, increase circulation, increase cardiovascular function, and also increase metabolism. With increased metabolism and increased circulation, we have the ability to enhance the body's capacity to detoxify itself from things that it might not yet have gotten around to eliminating. And in the course of our daily life, what we ingest, what we drink, what we put on our skin, uh, what we're, what we're uh, exposed to in our internal and external environments, we sometimes have a backlog of both metabolic waste and environmental toxins and sometimes drug residues that it behooves us to eliminate from the body to improve the function of our tissues and our organs and thereby our entire immune system and systemic capacity to uh, maintain our health. So we use the dry sauna and we use the steam sauna to sometimes prep the body for further treatment, but sometimes as single treatments uh, repeated multiple times throughout the week when we're focusing specifically on detoxification and environmental medicine. Cold and friction is in addition to either our dry or steam saunas where we're really focusing on uh, stimulating the system and not just relaxing it and waking up and reviving both the nervous system and the circulatory system by scrubbing the body down, both uh, awakening the dermis and as well as moving the lymph with physical mechanical action which uh, responds a little bit better to physical massage and physical action than just the hot and cold therapies. Salt scrubs are used similarly, and again, we will do the clay, mud, and botanical wraps often after a infrared or steam sauna. These treatments are followed frequently by colonics for internal cleansing and can be combined with massage, which is a traditional way of using hydrotherapy to combine physical medicine massage techniques where we'll focus on not only moving the lymph, 
about releasing uh, trigger points and uh, congested areas of muscle, uh, treating inflammation with medicated oils, or uh, putting uh, the body back into place, its connected tissue, its joint arrangements in order to relieve pain, enhance circulation, and as part of an overall wellness approach in addition. These treatments can be received at the clinic uh, both singly uh, and signed up for and are also part of overall protocol strategies that the naturopathic physicians here will recommend and design to treat, again, simple acute illnesses, uh, sprains, strains, infectious processes, as well as rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and a number of other chronic, especially autoimmune and inflammatory conditions. The training that SEM naturopathic medical students get uh, in the clinic with hydrotherapy begins in their uh, first few years, but the clinical experience they will receive in their third and fourth year includes uh, clinical rotations in the hydrotherapy suite learning how to apply these applications in different disease processes, both acutely and chronically, with different intensities and uh, different series in order to uh, address both pain, dysfunction, inflammation, infection, and other uh, acute and long-standing disease processes. The hydrotherapy equipment is available to all the shifts and all the doctors will make use of it, and uh, as well specific shifts that focus on these therapies. In addition, we have an advanced hydrotherapy lab. The advanced hydrotherapy lab allows the, the advanced students to focus on applying the different hydrotherapy treatments to more uh, advanced disease cases, uh, more fragile cases where the details are important and they're able to go through specific variations, treatments, and protocols uh, specific to some of these applications. An example would be the treatment of cardiac heart failure with hydrotherapy and helping to manage problems of edema and circulation with uh, gentle and specific thermal therapy and the movement of the circulation. So, Judy? Back to you. Thank you, Dr. Hazel. That was very informative. Um, so now at this, this time, we're going to open the floor for any questions that you may have, as well as address those questions that were submitted beforehand via our website. You can always request information from me at j.durham, and that's D-U-R-H-A-M, at scnm.edu. So let's go ahead and get started on the questions that you have regarding hydrotherapy. All right, Dr. Hazel, my first one to ask, how long does sequential hydrotherapy improve the immune response and how frequently does the treatment need to be done? Well, in the, the study that I cited, which is one of the more interesting studies, what they did was they had three different hydrotherapy versions that the patients did. And one was done in the morning, one was done in the afternoon, and one was done with the evening. And all three essentially were variations of a short cold application. So what they did was three times a day, and they did the study for six weeks, and then evaluated after the six weeks. And so. Uh, it's hard to say uh, if what, when the improvement occurred, but with three times a day, and the patients did most of these therapies at home, three times a day over the course of six weeks, they were able to show significant improvement. Awesome. In, you know, in clinical experience, often uh, just one or two treatments a week shows uh, mild improvement, and a three to four times a week uh, approach for several weeks in a row shows uh, moderate to great improvement. Awesome. My next question comes, um, as a student, would I get to take advantage of these therapies at a discounted rate? Yes. I, I don't know what the exact prices are, but uh, relative to 
uh, any of these treatments performed in other clinics or at any of the European centers or spas, it's quite cheap for a student. Very good. Um, my next question, when doing the hot and cold therapy, how hot should the hot be and for how long should the person soak in the hot and how cold should the cold be and for how long? Oh, that's an excellent question, but that really leads us into the reality of hydrotherapy that it's individually based. What is too hot for one person is not hot enough for another. Same thing with the cold. It is very important to only, especially when we're using, we're talking about temperatures, it's very important to only do it to tolerance. Uh, hot is generally an application that we don't go above uh, 102 to 103 degrees uh, of temperature applied to the skin. Occasionally we will go above that, 105 or more, but you get into the arena where you might burn them and it's very important to uh, make sure you've medically assessed the, the patient and make sure that they can tolerate the heat. Same thing with the cold. Uh, cold, again, is usually somewhere in the range of 55 degrees. But there are absolutely patients whose temperature extremes need to be uh, much less dramatic. The very young, the very old, diabetics, uh, insulin-dependent diabetics, people with problems with their nervous system or their skin uh, and other hormonal systems, they cannot tolerate extremes of hot and cold. And extremes of hot and cold can either burn or damage the tissue. And so it's very important to get more education uh, and to understand the, the, the real details of the mechanics, especially when applying them to ill patients. Awesome. Great. Um, next question. Can hydrotherapy replace medicine? Can it heal the patient strictly by using only hydrotherapy? Well, the, that speaks to a fundamental question, I would say that we have in naturopathic medicine, which for myself I've answered, uh, the body is capable of healing a great many conditions, both acute and chronic, without the use of pharmaceutical drugs. And hydrotherapy is an aid to that. So it is part of what is possible uh, to enhance the capacity to heal. Now, having said that, it does not mean that hydrotherapy is a panacea, it's a cure-all. Uh, not all conditions uh, can be treated with hydrotherapy, and some should not be treated with hydrotherapy. Some conditions uh, with hydrotherapy wrongly applied could hurt them, just like any medicine. Hydrotherapy is not for every patient or every disease process. Having, again, said that, hydrotherapy can do amazing things correctly applied to the right cases. Great. Perfect. Um, next question. In regards to colon cleansing, is the colonic method more effective in the removal of unwanted plaque or waste, or is the oral method in regards to a salt flush or similar method more effective? Well, you know, again, uh, not in no way am I trying to sidestep, but most uh, situations of, of any sort of disease process is going to be individualized. Colonics are particularly beneficial if the problem is in the colon because that's where that's where the work is done. That's where the actual water flushing occurs. There are certainly instances where a colonic is not appropriate. Uh, there are disease states of the colon where uh, colonics should not be done, in which case uh, oral therapies are the preferred method. Uh, there are lots of reasons why colonics would either be not indicated or unsafe. I have a tendency to try to correct bowel problems by working with, with the diet with oral methods. That is my preference, but there are certain situations where a direct treatment of the problem area does get you farther. <laughs> Perfect. My next question is, can you share your best success story using hydrotherapy? That's really hard to say. I, I used hydrotherapy in so many different cases. 
and I've almost always used hydrotherapy as part uh, as of an extended protocol. So sometimes it might be hard to say. I can I can use two examples to maybe give you an idea about what hydrotherapy in practice might be like. Uh, one is a fairly simple example. I had a case uh, an ICU nurse actually who came in and he had a rather uh, extensive infection in the lower leg and he had a um, a history of uh, quite a number of severe bacterial infections. And his leg was swollen and red and painful and pussy and oozing. And he was, uh, he, <laughs> he'd, he'd had a number of antibiotic rounds of therapies in the past for things unsuccessfully. So he was insistent on having a non-antibiotic approach. And so we agreed. I said, uh, if we could get him better in 24 hours, that he could not my script that I wrote him, and we used mullein heating compresses topically combined with uh, uh, oral botanical antimicrobials, and these two treatments he did, uh, gosh, I think he probably did maybe six or seven rounds on the first day and three or four rounds on the following day, and it only took about three days before most of the infection had resolved, and probably about six days before there was no sign of any infection whatsoever. And it really, the, the first day and the first rounds of treatments, uh, we reduced his pain, uh, inflammation, and swelling significantly within just the office visit, let alone what he did at home. So that was, you know, kind of dramatic uh, and short, acute response. Another one is a little bit more complicated. Uh, one of my cardiac heart failure patients, he had had uncontrolled hypertension for quite a few number of years. He was not responding well to different um, pharmaceutical drug regimens. He had recently had a stroke, and he was proceeding into a heart failure with uh, a number of the problems that go along with that, uh, in, inability to sleep laying down, uh, the, his pulmonary uh, edema was worsening, he had lower leg edema as well, uh, and another, a number of other complications, extreme fatigue, bradycardia, uh, continued hypertension, and poor response to uh, a number of different pharmaceutical uh, antihypertensives and diuretics. So we used constitutional hydrotherapy and a number of other variations along with a cleansing diet uh, over the course of approximately three months he improved dramatically. The treatments were done nearly every day. We did most of them in office for the first three to four weeks, and then we trained his wife to apply a lot of the treatments at home, so he was able to uh, do most of the treatments at home and come into the office just once a week, uh, sometimes twice. And we lowered his blood pressure, and uh, we improved his heart rate. We got him out of his arrhythmic bradycardic state. Uh, he had a S3 gallop as well, and we improved that. Uh, we resolved his edema. We resolved his fatigue. And he was able to return to work. Awesome. I love the success story. Uh, my next question, can hydrotherapy or naturopathy in general be combined with medicine or will that cause side effects? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, hydrotherapy can be combined with, if by medicine if what you mean is conventional medicine, then all the time. Uh, after all, hydrotherapy is often used in conventional medicine, though it might sometimes be used differently than some of the ways that we use it. But quite a lot of my patients uh, begin their hydrotherapy protocols and they are on uh, different pharmaceutical meds. Uh, we use hydrotherapy. Uh, appropriately pre or post surgery to enhance healing, uh, but yeah, it definitely can be combined together. If they are on any medication that it's very important that they maintain blood levels of, uh, example would be insulin, uh, but there are pain meds, uh, there are chemotherapy protocols, in which case you do have to be very careful. Um, and uh, you do not want to enhance the detoxification or the clearance of those medications in a way that will disrupt the, the balance or the effectiveness of the medication. Perfect, perfect. I'm going to take about two more questions, and then I'm going to change my screen to the admission screen. Um, but my next question, would you do the hot and cold therapy with a mud treatment to manage pain relief? Yes, and, and we have, absolutely. 
uh, usually what we'll do is, well, actually, we can, it depends on the situation. It depends on where the, the pain is coming from. For instance, pain can be due primarily due to uh, lymphatic congestion, can be due primarily to, to muscle spasm, can be due to uh, inflammation and uh, inflammation of different tissues. So depending on the uh, combination of these problems or the dominance of these problems will sort of define how we organize the therapy. Great. And looks like my last question regarding hydrotherapy is when is hydrotherapy not useful? Uh, motor vehicle accident when you're bleeding out. Well, in which case, actually, if you happen to have an ice pack, an ice pack put over a bleeding wound can slow the bleeding. Uh, but there, there's, there's certainly, you know, major injury, major damage, things that need to be corrected with surgery is appropriate. Uh, there are uh, life-threatening situations, anaphylactic shock, uh, uh, severe, uh, very severe asthma um, with the inability to breathe entirely. There are all sorts of very severe situations where hydrotherapy is not my, my go-to acute answer. And, uh, and conventional medication or surgery or other approaches are clearly the better choice. Perfect, perfect. So if you have any other questions, otherwise, on behalf of SCNM, I would like to again thank Dr. Hazel for her participation today, great presentation, and to each of you for joining us today. So I do hope you found today's webinar informative and helpful. So at this time, this can now concludes our webinar. Thanks again for joining.